Today I'd like to focus on that Lenten pillar of almsgiving. Like the Lenten pillars of prayer and fasting, this is a pillar that's meant to bring us into a deeper relationship with God and with one another. It's important for us as Christians to understand that almsgiving is not an option. It's something that's essential to the Christian life. When we look at the sixth chapter of Matthew's Gospel, we see that Jesus doesn't say, if you choose to give alms, but rather he says, when you give alms. In other words, it's expected that his disciples will in fact give alms. Why do we give alms? Well, we give alms because they unite us to God. They unite us to God who is love. Love means to will the good of another. When we think about God himself and what it means to say God is love, what we're talking about is the three persons of the Trinity completely and totally giving of themselves to one another. And see, that's the model for us. We're meant to give of ourselves. And in doing so, what we'll find is that we're uniting ourselves more closely with God. We are becoming more godlike the more that we give. And especially, it's important for us to know that we are called to give from that space of self-need, not from a space of excess, but to give of everything that we have. You see, so often I think we just tend to think of almsgiving as, oh, I'll write a check, or I've got my rice bowl from Catholic Relief Services, and I'll put my spare change in that and give that to the poor, and I've done my duty. See, that's not almsgiving at all. That's actually going against the Spirit, because it's still withholding something essential for myself. A true almsgiving is something where we give from that place where it hurts, so to speak, uh, where we give completely of ourselves to another. And that's what we're called to do as Christians. When we look to that sixth chapter of Matthew's Gospel, once again, Jesus gives the instructions for how it is that we are to give alms. He says that when you give alms, don't do what the pagans do. That is, don't go into the marketplace and blow trumpets and draw attention to yourself so that you can win the praise and the esteem of others. Yet so often that's what people do today, don't they? How many programs do we have that are named after somebody who funded the program? Or how many buildings have a name on it based on the person who gave money to build that building? See, true almsgiving doesn't focus back in on ourselves. True almsgiving is focusing on the needs of another, which is why Christ says, rather when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. In other words, don't be about boasting about what this is about. Rather, do it in secret and do it with the intention of building up the kingdom around you. That's an essential part of almsgiving, is that it builds up the kingdom around us. You see, when we look at the Acts of the Apostles and how almsgiving was done then, we're told that people went off and sold all of their possessions and laid it at the feet of the apostles. And from there, it was distributed to everyone according to their needs. See, that's the idea behind almsgiving. It's about meeting the needs of one another. Again, we can think of that great image that St. Paul gives us of the mystical body of Christ, which means that when one member is suffering or when one member is in need, the entire community, the entire body suffers. And it's up for the other, to the other members of the body to go and to respond to those various needs. That's an important concept for us to understand when we talk about our almsgiving. It's that building up of this mystical body of Christ. It's that joyful entering into union with God by giving of ourselves, not with the expectation that we're going to receive something in return, but with the understanding that by giving of myself, I open that space and allow myself to be more closely united with God. I allow myself not only to be a person who emulates God's love, but who's also capable of receiving it.